Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. I've danced with death before, but that was a particularly intimate waltz. I suppose I'm the lone survivor. <sighs> How jolly. Bracchus Rex, ruler to some, tyrant to others, long dead to all. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to elves. Um, well, elves eat people and their pets. Elves don't know the alphabet. The child's eyes grow wide. People ask you to eat them? Really? Neat. Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside, anyway. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore.
These bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. Magister Jalen from the ship. I would have chosen a swifter death for him myself. Look here, Quercus. Another giant. My word, this blasted isle is teeming with them. What's that? Yes, I did see how it made short work of the great acorn servants. Quite right, very impressive. But that is no reason to trust it. Giants like that destroyed our forests. They are the very reason the great acorn is returning in all its wrath. What? Dear me, have you taken leave of all six of your senses? You would have me use this giant for a shield? Why would I... Oh, I see. You cunning devil, Quercus. Of course, if it defeated the great acorn's vile servants, it can do so again. We need only follow in its big, wide shadow and be safe. Gads! It speaks our tongue, Quercus! Hush before! What do you mean a good time for introductions? You know full well who I am, you silly old cat. The great Salora, grandest of the... Oh, introduce myself to the giant. I shall do no such thing. You give away your trust too easily, my dear steed. No, we will have the giant march. In time, we'll see whether it deserves our confidence. Now, onwards! Shield! Venture forth, post haste! The great acorn waits for no one. Our shield speaks, Quercus! Prick up your phantom ears! Dear me! It has questions, Quercus! Hmm? Why, yes, I suppose answering them is the polite thing to do. Speak! Shield! What are your queries? A giant body, but no giant brain, eh, Quackers? Surely even the tall folk know that Rivalon was bare before the great acorn fell from above and seeded the Irwood, covering this land in beautiful, perfect forests. Beautiful and perfect until the giant races, no offense, realized they could use it to build their houses and fuel their fires. They carved the Irwood up and the forests shrank and shrank. None of the original wood remains. But someday, the great acorn will fall again, the forests will be reborn, and the giant races will be wiped from this world. <clears throat> At least that's what I hear. Oh, Quercus, it wants answers. As if it is the first creature to ponder the big questions of the universe. What tree did the great acorn fall from? Where did that tree come from, if not a greater acorn? Could you build a nest great enough to store the great acorn for the winter? Some questions have no answers, Quercus. Why is that so difficult to understand? The great acorn will come. It will destroy the world, and squirrels will reign supreme forever. I fail to see what's so difficult to grasp. What do you say, Quercus? 
We once believed it was good, but now... No, quite right. As terrible as the giants have been to us, we do not want to see them wiped out. Rather, we must find a way to live together in peace, giant and squirrel. Solora stops short, then shakes his head and pats Quercus affectionately. Squirrels change, don't they, Quercus? Priorities change. If we do not adapt, we are sure to perish. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red color. Could he be...? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smouldering embers that sizzle your very soul. No, I do not. Then again, I don't belong to the House of Dreams. I'm a prince of the House of War, a house you seem to be all too familiar with, judging by that rather fetching mark on your cheek. I have not. But how fortuitous it is indeed for a slave girl to walk on by and confirm a dreamer's presence on this isle. Now that you've served your purpose, though, you and I have a problem. You've clearly relinquished your duties by running away from your rightful master, a crime punishable by death. You know, I think I've heard of you. The assassin with the needle. I'd much rather have one such as you for an ally, not an adversary. After all, you did come back for me and all those others on a sinking ship. What do you say we bury the hatchet, you and I? For now, at least. Good, very good. I'm glad you're being so sensible. Glad I can return to my ruminations. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Judging by the dark pools that are your eyes, I'd say you're seeing yourself. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. Of course, it's rather specific. Quite obviously, I'm musing over the very actual empire that I lost. 
Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. I already told you I'm a prince. Do you mean to tell me you don't know who I am? The very same. I am the Red Prince, the All-Conqueror, the World Tamer, the Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. this and that, tag along. Do you really mean to compare the fate of an empire to whatever foibles you seek to fix? On the other hand, I really could do with a dog's body. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island, most likely the same chap you're looking for. Promise me we'll find him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. Fair enough. I shan't pretend I don't feel the same. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Do, do not take my elegance as a mask for frailty. My blows shatter shields, and my thrusts pierce armor. If a warrior you need, the warrior you'll have. I offered the perfection of the blade, and you seek the perfection of the blade. How fortuitous. Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're away, you'll be travelling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! creature, almost as graceful as I am. It seems we are not the only ones taking on strays. No, oh, no need to be jealous, Quackers. Fur maketh not the cat. The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity. Hmm. What? How did I get... Hey, stop following me. What? No, that can't be. I can't... Hey, stop following me. Huh? Yes, 
fine. I'm fine. I just... I'm not sure. It's all a little foggy. The cat opens his mouth as if to speak, but his eyes lose focus, and with a jerk, he turns away from you. I wonder where this leads. As the alcove opens up, you see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before it sank. He's still not wearing his mask. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling at the skin of its face. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh, perhaps... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation. That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. It seems the human that stole my mask was rather more resourceful than I gave her credit for. I chased her here, but she rather seems to have given me the slip. Thus... He turns back to the body, prodding at its face cautiously. Why, its face, of course. What other use would I have for some rotting corpse? A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately, but viciously, rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me! And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal. Oh, get away, monster! Hide the children! Oh. You are simple beasts, and you simply do not like my... Well, not my kind, but those that look like me. So, if I am to traverse this land, I will need a mask to disguise my features. Simply put, I am an Eternal, and you are not. You have my sympathies. Indeed, no one seems to have the good taste to be. My people are rather... absent. At least from this realm. As for the others, well, there is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Well, that hardly seems relevant. But if you must know... I was inconvenienced for a time. Several centuries, in fact, or perhaps millennia, one tends to lose track. 
I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its full potential. Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if flowers would be appropriate. Ah, well, that is the curious thing. They are clearly absent from this world, and yet they are everywhere. Every one of your races resembles them in some manner, and the statues you have built to your gods look remarkably familiar. Perhaps my people have ascended to some new realm, or perhaps your gods are merely a folk memory. Regardless, they are not here, but I will find them, wherever they are. I will find them. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in, well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality, but being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? Much magic? I was controlling the powers of the universe while your people were still... Uh, doing whatever it is you used to do. What speciality would you prefer? You've asked the wizard if he would please join your party as a wizard. And here I was, worried that your people might not be the sharpest tools in the crate. I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off. It's a lot nicer here than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them wringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Say hi for me! Now where shall I put this one? Answer him. Need I repeat myself? But I know nothing of any Verdas. We already know the truth, Magister. Now speak. I am a proud loyal to the Order. I would not dream of subverting our cause. Atusa, please. Your Godwoken has asked you a question. Answer him. Need I repeat myself? But I know nothing of any Verdas. We already know the truth, Magister. Now speak. Stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our Godwoken speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come! You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask.
Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her dagger to its root. Her eyes squeeze shut. Drops of blood form against the dagger's edge and quickly fall to the ground. She groans. Stop! My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop, and your friend these many years. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, then you will help the Void destroy it. Dallas? Yes, Your Holiness? I believe we're done here. What a waste. Come, we'll be needed elsewhere. The Lizard Magister, or what's left of her, lies in a puddle of gore. She was a lizard, yet a magister. No matter her reasons, her penalty was fair. These creatures are so prone to violence, naturally, the weaker specimens suffer. He hasn't changed a bit. Always. A single name throbs across your brain. Verdas, Verdas, Verdas. He must escape. He cannot die here. He cannot. Come on, old man. I can't wait all day. <coughs> I got my eye on you, Moss Muncher. Don't try any of that sauce business on my watch or I'll do to you what the hammer did to that traitor. You shut that filthy gash in your face before I cut it right off you. You're all the same, you sorcerers. Don't recognize what's good for you. Like dogs, you lot. Did you see them? You did, right? Those claws. Wonder what's behind the masks, too. Can't be pretty. That, Magister, that was Bishop Alexander, leader of the Divine Order, and his right hand, Dallas. How do you not know this? Better get to it then. A magister will come and find you when they're ready for you. Could be a while though. We're up to our hoods in sinners these days. Bishop Alexander and the Hammer herself. They, they were so close, almost within arm's reach. She's gone. You don't know them? Oh, remarkable. Bishop Alexander is the son of the Divine, the leader of the Divine Order. And Dallas, the Hammer, is his right hand. They are all that stand between you, me and the Void. And they were right here just a moment ago, attending to some business. Have a look yourself, miss. I think the traitor is still there, in a somewhat huh, changed condition. She's gone, Farah. Gone! Come on, then, Legsy. Hey up. 
I find I need bread. I want no trouble. Bread or a brisket, toes the same. Your griff teaches you to bully others. Pathetic. You keep his name out of your mouth, you filthy cod chewer. <coughs> Have your cud. Disgusting. Hello. Just like all your cards. You gonna pray all day, buddy? Disgusting like theft. Disgusting like threats. Grave God. Will you quit dragging this on? Turn that on, Leslie. Right Just hand over the, the goats. Stay I will down, not. you. Dear one, help me teach this beast. He must respect. Respect? Huh. <laughs> Someone's got to keep this place running. Griff can't do it for free. Why'd you got to make this so hard? An intense-looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well-muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognize him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the way here. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. The thug freezes in fear for a moment before shuffling back to the protection of his crony. Pay up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Hello. You gonna pray all day, buddy? Everyone in camp's got to contribute. For food, for protection, no exceptions. Especially not for elves. Griff's orders. Food? Protection? I have neither. Runs the kitchen. Means he runs me, you, and everyone else in camp. You two ought to be thanking your lucky gods it's us, and not the Magisters enforcing round here. A fool never knows what they've got till it's well and gone. Now come on, Elf. If you make me say it again, there's gonna be trouble. Why, yes. Of course I am. All my life. Hello, D. Oh, Wood. Impaler. He shifts uncomfortably. Ah, get out of here, will ya? You ain't worth my time. Neither of you. The elf smiles and bows to you in thanks. Follow me before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place. Where's the oil? Ifan rolls his sleeves back down. He nods at you, the shadow of a smile on his lips. Good work there. Good work. I can tell you've got chops. Say, you were on the ship here with me, weren't you? He stretches out one rough hand to shake yours. He grips your hand tight as a vice and shakes it, hard. Say, you don't look all that busy now that we're safely on dry land. I could use someone to watch my back, and it looks like you could use someone to watch yours. I've just got a small errand to run, and then I'll be looking to get the hell out of here while I've still got a neck to collar. How about we stick together until we get out of this place? He shrugs, looking off to the side. Mercenaries. It's a job. My job. Is that indigestion or is it... Oh God. The usual way. Haphazard, terrifying and drenched in blood. Haven't quite worked out the details yet, but I'll wager it'll be no worse than what'll happen if we stay put. 
Two heads are better than one. And when push comes to shove, four fists are better than two, right? He grins, sharp teeth glittering in the midday sun. So, before we hit the road, it's best if we decide battle strategies up front. Should keep more of our blood in. Survival's my main priority. I'll use every trick in the book to keep us alive. But if a wayfarer's not what you're after, I've got other skills. What do you need? Dexterous arts. What are you looking for exactly? A tapestry embroiderer? Can do. Onwards. He scans the horizon for threats with one green eye, then nods back at you. Right you are. Lead the way. Hey, I know you. Losa, the dark-eyed jokester you met aboard the ship, waves enthusiastically and dips into a mock elegant curtsy. Back then, I was <coughs> Madame Josephine Gribbles de Pube, and you were Sibyl, right? Glad to see you made it. Nothing like a nice tentacle slap across the moor to set the tone for the week, eh? How'd you escape? I saw you fall. We all did. Thought you were done for. When we get out of this place, I owe you a pint. So you managed to swim to safety, is that it? What about when you were in the water? Didn't hear anything unusual, did you? I heard the same thing. Do you know what this means? It means I'm not the only. Losa's voice catches in her throat. The joy drains from her face. Her eyes lose focus and her whole body goes rigid. She is stock still, waxy skinned, her eyes dark. Greyish black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks. Her head snaps to you mechanically and her eyes lock with yours. Dark pupils dilated into great black voids. Light suddenly flashes back into her face. The grey veins drain to pinkish flesh, and her whole body relaxes. Anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, oh, it's nothing really. It's just, I'm just a bit, well, a bit hospitable. Put it like this. You've never been a host, I bet. That's because you're an infested clump of leaves on the side of the road. That ain't bad, though. I'd give just about anything to be like you. But I'm a... a roadside inn. Red door, flowers out front, friendly lady at the door beckoning you in for half price. Like a god's damn gold star inn for the disembodied. Now, isn't that just the question of the hour? I can't be sure just yet. I'll be surprised if it's a demon. Definitely not a sprite either. Maybe a spectre, but I wouldn't bet money on it. So, how are you enjoying the joy? So true, and you can stay as long as your heart desires, free of charge. So, you want to check this place out together? Strength in numbers and all that. It does, right? Before we head out, I've got more than a few tricks up my sleeve, so you'll have to pick which one I'll pull out if, <laughs> when, push comes to shove. Lately I've been into the enchanting arts, but I can shoot, slash, Summon, steal, whatever your little black heart desires. So, what'll it be?
don't know if you could tell, but mysticism's kind of my speciality. Let's get into the nitty gritty while we're at it. What sort of magic are you interested in? Sounds fine. So we're good to go? Yeah? Well, that was easier than I thought. And I'll do my best to stay myself. Lead the way. Bow your head, please. If we chant the endless prayer, the next divine will ascend, even if your kind has displeased the god so terribly of late. You know what I mean, Elf. The dwarves and lizards are no better. The lot of you would drag us all into oblivion with your blind devotion to Source. The time of Source is over. The man looks at you with eyes full of pity. With things as they are, it seems you worship nothing at all. What a lonely life that must be. Lucian, no more now than a picture. The divine reduced to the mere representation of a man, as brittle as the paint on this canvas. The shrine depicts Lucy and the Divine, avatar of the seven gods. It does not react. Shrine, by the looks of it. Your kind of getting too big for your boots, you know? Bloody cavies. Ought to keep out of our air if you don't want to pay for the pleasure. Your kind, and the dwarves and lizards besides. Those of you that see the old realm eaten up by the void world before you change your ways. I saw what you did there, convincing Burrow not to lay down the law on that elf. Your kind stick together like stink on garbage, don't you? Sure, I got a little source in me, but I'm a human. We're trying to save Rivalon from source, even when it's in our own bellies. It's the rest of you that are causing all this chaos. You, you there. You, you've just arrived, isn't that right? Are you, are you quite alone? It's just, I have a proposition. Something, something very worth knowing. But it's hardly a group affair. I only need one. In that case, listen up. You must think me mad to approach a stranger, but this camp is full of cowards and I'm running out of time. Fast, too fast, way too fast. <laughs> you would be too if you'd been here as long as I have. In fact, you should be nervous if you're here at all. I know what they have planned for us, and it ain't pretty. I've been here a long time. Longer than anyone else. People get taken sometimes. Some folks say they get cured. I don't know if I believe it, and I don't want to wait and find out. I have a way out of here. It won't be easy, and I need a partner. Just one. Are you interested? Believe whatever you want. This may be your only chance at leaving this place. Take it or don't. 
Had a gal. Who wouldn't? Finally, someone with a little sense around here. The plan's simple. Completely foolproof. I have a spell that I can use to teleport you right out of here. I can't use it on myself, but with your help, we can both get out of here. There's an artifact that you can use to teleport me out of this place. Then I can use my spell to free you in turn. Uh, this item, though, it's in quite an unfortunate location. And how many would make it before the guards noticed, hmm? Four? Five? Every bloody sorcerer in this place? Nah, they'd have to take their own chances. I need one accomplice, no more. It's found its way into a nest of crocodilians on a secluded beach nearby. Here, give me your map and I'll show you where to go. Not enough to trouble a fine specimen such as yourself. Get that artifact, and you and I are as good as free. Go give those overgrown lizards what for. Phila can't hear himself think with all this racket. Day and night she hollers after that child. You hear that, Farah? You got to cut that out. What's happened to you? Aye, she needs help, but none that I can give. Matters a cooker, that one, and twice as loud. What else do you call hollering after a ghost? That child of hers she's shouting after has been dead and buried a month over. Killed by a void woken back in our home village. Never even stepped foot in Fort Joy. And there ain't no amount of hollering that'll bring her back. No, no. It just was the pair of yellow cheating liars. Um, Don't I? Mean, I can't beat you. Where are you, darling? Please, can you? <gasps> An elf! Stay away, cannibal! If I find out you've gone near my baby, I'll skin you alive. I don't care. I don't care. Please, just leave me be. Irma, where are you, dear? Mummy's worried sick about you. Where? Is he? Oh, I don't think I ain't watching. That's your please, thing. please, you must help me. No one here will help me. Not one of these bastards. A child is missing. My baby. Irma. She's called Irma. I haven't seen her in days. I'm sick with worry. Completely sick. And no one in this damn camp will lift a finger to help me find her. This place turns people cold. Cold and wicked. That fellow Jeth over there speaks unutterable evil, but I can't move away from him. What if Irma comes back and I'm not here? I last saw her just here, near three days ago. She was playing with her little doll, and I was washing out her tunic. I turned from her for one moment, and she was gone. Left her doll behind, too. It's so unlike her. He hasn't changed Yes, of course. Here, you should take it with you. When you find her, give her the doll and tell her, Mummy says this is for her little chicken, and it's time to come home. That's what I call her, my little chicken. She soaks up a steady stream of tears with her shirt sleeve. She ought to come with you, then. She ought to follow you back to me. You are an angel. Truly, you are. Irma? Irma? That's it. I call Farah. 
She ain't coming back. The woman is scrabbling at her throat, as though she can hardly breathe. As she catches sight of you, recognition flashes in her terrified eyes. She drops her hands from her throat and starts hyperventilating. Ben! Ben Mist! Ivan! Ben Mist! You killed them! You killed them! He killed them all! Murderer! You can't hide who you are, killer. Look! Look at him! It's him! It's the Silver Claw himself! Ivan Ben Mist! Stay back! Stay back. Keep the best. Away from me. <laughs> the woman is scrabbling at her throat, as though she can hardly breathe. Don't touch me. You're too close. This collar, this place. Squeezing the life from me. Do you? You seem fine. Don't you feel how tight this collar is? And there's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. Her hands move again to her throat. She seems to try to make space between her neck and the collar, but there's no space to be made. Fella's got more right hands than an octopus. <laughs> It's too 